everybody, I'm Louise from Wildflower World and welcome back to day six of Vlogmas. I'm going to run out of fingers soon. It has been a great day. It's Sunday. It's been a relaxing day. I have spent most of the day knitting and watching Christmas movies. It's been wonderful. It has been absolutely a great end to the weekend and you are going to be pleasantly surprised, I hope, with my knitting progress because I certainly am. My sock is, I'm calling it on track. I wanted to have the heel done today and I have the heel flap done. I'm knitting my hair into it apparently. So there it is. So look at that. There's the cuff, my leg, and there's the heel flap. And this is the back side. So I did a two and a half inch heel flap over half the number of stitches and I'm ready to turn the heel and that will only take 10 minutes. It won't take long. So I will do that before I go to bed tonight and then my sock will be on track for tomorrow to pick up those gusset stitches and start decreasing away and start working on the foot. I feel like this is going really, really quickly. I'm liking it. It's so beautiful. Every time I look at it, I just like, man, I love those stripes. Love those colors. Holly Berry, Timber Yarns, if you haven't seen the other videos. Sock, up to date, on track, no stress. The hat, my son's Christmas hat that he asked for, is finished. And I think the length is perfect. I tried it on, it's just a smidge big for me. So I think that means it will fit him nicely. And I like how it ended with some green on top. I'm gonna ask him if he wants a pom-pom. I have a feeling he's gonna say no. I don't know, Do you, what do you guys think? Are pom-poms more for women's hats or are they equally for men's? They really can be unisex, right? I don't think that means one or the other, right? I don't think so either. I don't know. I just have a feeling he's going to say no to a pom-pom. I guess I could just put it on there, couldn't I? We'll see. Actually, I'm not going to make pom-poms because I want to do a few more hats. I have a few more balls of this yarn, and I'm not going to use the yarn on pom-poms until the very end because I want to get as many hats and cowls and maybe a couple pairs of mitts out of these balls. So I'm not going to use up the yarn on pom-poms just yet. But it's pretty fun, isn't it? This was that yarn that I can never remember the name of. You guys probably remember better than I do. Craft Smart. Value Jacquard. So there's another ball of it. And I have, I should weigh it to know exactly, but I'm kind of guessing my educated guess here is that I have about half the ball left. So I'm hoping I can get another hat out of one ball. What is the yardage on this anyways? So the name of this is Ivy and Cranberries. I like that name. And the yardage, it's a medium weight, 100% acrylic. They suggest a 5.5 millimeter needle. I used a four and a half. I mean, this yarn is not thick enough, I don't think for a five and a half, at least not for me. I knit very loose, so I guess maybe that's why, but they're calling it a four, a medium weight, a worsted weight. I know, that just seems a little bit big needle. Ah, da, 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 da. <laughs> here I'm looking in the fine print for the yardage and here it is, a nice bold print. <laughs> okay, so what do we got here? 120 grams. 215 yards, 197 meters. Okay. Well, we'll see if I can get two hats out of one ball. That would be exciting if I could. Anyways, one Christmas hat done. And I like it. I think Eric will really like it too. I may do kind of a uh, porch drop off so he can start wearing it if he wants to. And then I'm going to work on some more. So next, so tomorrow's projects are, I need to finish my dishcloth. Tomorrow we're going to talk about my attempt at fixing my knitting needle. Do you remember I told you I had that Nick, Knit Picks wooden needle and it had that little 
<sighs> I don't, I'm having a hard time knowing exactly what to call it because it's not a, a crack as in not that it broke or split. Well, I don't know. It has a split in it. Maybe that's what I'll call it. it has a split and I attempted to fix it. So I'll let you know tomorrow and I'll show you the video, the video footage of me in my attempt and we'll talk about whether it was successful or if it wasn't. But regardless, I'm going to finish that dishcloth because if I don't, I won't have a finished dishcloth and it's, well, hmm, technically I really should have it finished today, but Nah, one day here or there is not a big deal because I can't mess up. I am now, I am in like the sprint to the end of the month, to the end of the year to say I did a dishcloth every week this year. I cannot mess that up now. So my goal for tomorrow is to finish that dishcloth that I started last week on Monday for New Start Monday. It was the garter slip dishcloth. So that's tomorrow's job and maybe... Oh, and my sock, of course. I got to get that sock, on, keep that sock on track. And maybe cast on a new hat. I think those can be my three knitting priorities for tomorrow. I think so. Let's talk pom-poms. I am so excited to show you guys pom-poms. Do you want to see? I have a pom-pom box. I have so many pom-pom makers. It is a little ridiculous. And I, and I see that they're not all in my box, but you know those clear drawers that, uh, that are on wheels that I showed you like months ago when I started my yarn stash organizing. I have them kind of lined up on the wall here in front of me. And I see in one, right at the very front of the drawer, I see three pom-pom makers <laughs> because I know last year I couldn't find my box of pom-pom makers and I, I had to make, I, you're going to laugh at me. I had to make pom-poms. Well, I actually had to because it was one of my community knitting groups and we had some Christmas projects. We had some pom-poms. We were making pom-pom garlands for the library. So I truly needed my pom-pom makers and I could not find them to save my life. I could not find them anywhere. So I went out and I bought more. And apparently I've done that a couple of times because some sizes I have at least three of. But there again, in my defense, sometimes I need those because if we're doing a knitting like at Guild or a community knitting group, you need like you do need three. Or probably when the I was working for the Alzheimer's Society and I did a knitting recreational program there. You needed, you needed like two or three of a size. So you could have two or three people in the group doing them at the same time. So there you go. I just justified my pom, all my pom-pom maker purchases. Anyways, let me show you the sizes. I told you I had seven sizes and you know what? I am wrong. I think I have eight. I looked up on the Clover website because I, could, I couldn't find the the packaging that comes the piece that comes with the package when you when you buy it and I know I have kept them because you know it shows you the picture and it tells you the diameter of the pom-poms and I don't really care you know like I don't want to say oh I'm going to make a inch and three-quarter pom-pom today right I just know by the look of the pom-pom maker what kind of size it's going to make me and I know but anyway just for chatting here today I thought it would be kind of nice to know what the exact sizes are so I wrote them down let's start okay let's start with the teeny tiny ones teeny tiny okay first off my pom-pom makers are in this box Look at the box. Look at the snowman driving. I just love, I love this box. Anyway, so this is because my pom-pom makers are just really Christmas related. So I thought they needed a really fun, cute little Christmas box to store them in. Okay, so teeny tiny is the hot pink one. Okay, my notes aren't going to stay up here. 
They're gonna slide. Where? How can I set them? All right. Anyways, we'll, we'll muddle through here. This is the tiniest one that I have. And when you open it up, look how tiny. Look at that little. Where's the best? Is that it on the back? Look how it's tiny. That makes so that makes what I say a three quarter inch pom pom. The next size up is the purple one, and this makes a one inch. So a smidgen bit bigger. These two come sold together. They're all sold in pairs except for the absolute largest one and it's single. So those two come together if you want little tiny pom-poms. Then there's the pink and the yellow. These two are sold together. So the pink one makes an inch and three eighths. So we'll open it up and a little bigger again. The yellow one is the one that I use the most, and it's an inch and five eighths. And that's that's the one I used yesterday when we made those pom poms. So those two come as a set. Then we're getting into the larger ones. This one here is two and a half inches. Ta da! Look at that. Looks kind of green on the screen, but the pom-pom maker is yellow. That is that one. Oh, no, wait. I took that back. What did I call this? I did call I have it wrote down as yellow. It is kind of a lime green. Yeah. We'll call this one a lime green. It looks yellow until I actually look at the yellow one. Definitely green. Okay, so sorry. Get back on track, please. This green and this blue. These ones come together. So this blue makes a four and a half inch pom-pom. And that's pretty big. And then, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, maybe I do just have seven. I guess I need to learn to count. Anyways, Yes, that's a blue. Oh, you know what's messing me up? It's because these ones are both blue. Anyways, that's fine. Now, the absolute largest one that I have seen is this one. And I don't have, so I said this one here was four and a half inches. I'm not sure what this one is. Do I have a tape measure here? I do. I know there is. I might have to just lean down and grab it. Let's measure this just for fun. Okay. So to measure, let's go. Um, okay. Let's do on this blue one because we know this is telling us four and a half inches. And you're going to measure from this fridge all the way across to this fridge. Oh, this tape measure. So there's... Hmm. Nope. So when I said this must be the four and a half inch one. No. This one measures five inches across. But this one here, it wasn't... It said this had the blue one. That's four and a half. Oh, three and three eighths. Sorry. Yes. That's probably what this one here is. Three and three eighths. And then the large one, it says four and a half, but I'm actually getting. Yeah. It's kind of hard to measure across these when you're measuring across. But that one's probably about four and a half, four and three quarter inches wide. A pretty big pom pom. So there you go. There's seven sizes of pom poms for you guys who are into serious pom pom making. <laughs> Which I have a feeling that there's not very many of those out there other than me, maybe. Anyways, look at this. We didn't open this big one up, did we? Let's see how.
Ooh, isn't that interesting? This one here has a little notch on it right there. So it's like a lock. So you have to, I haven't used this one very much. I think I've only ever made one pom-pom. So you kind of have to pull this out and then this slides in. So it just doesn't open up. All of these other ones, you can just pull on this and they open up. This one does not, which maybe is a, who, who thought you needed a safety feature on a pom-pom maker? But, but if this is filled with yarn, this is a lot of yarn. So you're not going to want it to just open and have everything all unravel on you. Because that's a lot of work. And that would be a big, tangled mess. Isn't that funny? I like that. I like how they've done that. I have no idea how many wraps around this would take. A lot. I'm gonna do I'm gonna find out though. That's a lot of wrapping. Definitely want to do at least three strands on that, if not more. <laughs> this one here, this could count as exercise. This could be aerobic activity wrapping this big pom-pom. Okay, I'm gonna get my three balls of yarn again. I had to set those down to get, to get the pom-pom or to get the tape measure. So I've got my green my red and my white. Let me find my ends here. I think I'm just going to make, start making a bunch of different sized pom-poms. So this came from the yellow that we, so that makes that. Now, if I'm really thinking, I will keep these together so we can look at them afterwards. Will we do the little pink one? Actually, let's start right, start the way, the order that we pulled them out. Let's do this hot pink. So let's use three strands with all of them. This little hot pink guy is not going to take very many wraps to get that filled. I'm going to slide those ends in. Five, six, seven. Eight. I'm going to do eight wraps on this little one and I'll close it. And then I'm going to snip my three strands so I've got them to do the other side. So the other side, find those little tabs. You lift up both of them. I'm going to take the tails so you're lifting up both pieces. Remember from yesterday's video, you don't want to just wrap one and then wrap the other. You wrap them together. But because there's that split in between, that's where we're going to tuck those tails here right now, just to hold them. Works handy. Just getting them out of the way. And I'm going to wrap again. One. Seven and eight. And close it. And snip the ends. And then we'll cut it. So that's what it looks like. Look how teeny tiny that is. I think I've only used these little teeny tiny ones once before. And if I remember right, I don't know if I was real happy with how it turned out, but that could always have been my fault. I maybe didn't wrap it enough. 
It's hard to say. It's been a while. So we'll see what... I remember kind of thinking that it just didn't... Yeah, it didn't fluff up enough to really... I don't know. But anyways, we'll give it a whirl right now. And I am finding it's hard. There's not really a lot of room to get the scissors in. But it's not impossible. It's just not as easier as the bigger ones. Okay. And then always remember, once you've cut the strands all the way around, cut your piece of yarn because you want to tie it before you open it. You'll only do that once or twice. <laughs> without, uh, yeah, you're not going to forget that too many times. Once you have your pom-pom explode on you, you remember to tie it. <laughs> that may be a rite of passage, though. You may, maybe everybody has to open it once. <laughs> Hopefully it's on a smaller one where it's not a whole lot of yarn gone to waste and a whole lot of time. So I am just tying this in here as tight as I can get it. Now I'm going to go back to these little tabs and I'm going to open them. Now something here did not get cut because it's, see there's a resistance there. It's not opening. That's telling me that there was a strand of yarn. Oh, I see it now. You just need to separate what you've snipped open and just take a close look in there and see what, what just didn't get cut. And it can be the tiniest, it doesn't even have to be a whole strand of yarn. Sometimes it can just be like a single ply that will hold it. Like there's something, ah, oh, there it is. That one opens. This one. Now see if we how we did on this side. Let's put these down. And then you pull the sides apart. And here is a really funny looking bomb bomb. So I think what is sticking out here, those were the tails that I just poked through the pom-pom maker. <laughs> I just bought a brand new vacuum cleaner last weekend. And uh, actually haven't even taken it out of the box yet. That was supposed to have been one of this weekend's jobs and that didn't happen because I was knitting my sock. <laughs> but now I'm thinking what better way to christen a new vacuum cleaner than to bring it right up here and pick up all these little yarn bits that I'm trimming off because they're going right onto the floor. Okay, this, you know what? Oh my goodness. I actually think this is adorable. I don't know why I didn't think I liked these little ones. I think that is so sweet. I love that actually. That was the tiniest one. Okay. That was the hot pink. Oh my gosh. Okay, I think I have just found the newest thing that I'm going to be addicted to. Okay. I don't think I'm going to sit here and make one tonight in every size because you get the idea. But now you've seen the teeny tiniest one, right? Let's do, will we do another one? I'll fast forward through all the wrapping because you don't want to see me wrapping. But I know you're going to probably ask, what is the best size for a hat? So this was the yellow one. Kind of not really big enough for a hat, I don't think. I don't know. Maybe a, maybe a kid's hat. I think it looks 
just a little too small, I think, on an adult hat. Maybe not though. That one could be borderline. So let's try the next, let's do the next size up, which is the, it's kind of lime green one. Let's give this a, let's make, I'll make one of these really quick and then we'll compare. But this might be the size you might want to do for a hat. And what was this? This lime green one, this was the two and a half inch one. Then the blue one, this one here, this was the three and three eighths. I think this might be kind of big. Because the pom pom, they always, they always look a little bigger than the maker. So let me wrap this one really, really quick. So I'm going to count this just for fun because that little yellow one that I did last night, it was 26 wraps. And what did I do? The little hot pink one, I did eight wraps on it. The other one was 26, and so this is going to be more than 26. Okay, here we go. I wrapped that 60 times. And now I'm going to close it. And that's really full. You always want to over wrap instead of under wrap. Kind of just until, just where you think it won't close. You want to make sure. So I'm going to open up these little tabs again. So we're just wrapping in the center here. We're not going to put any yarn on these little flat pieces. All the yarn has to go inside. So again, I'm gonna take my ends. Now, so what I've been doing is I've just been sliding them in between here, but you don't have to. You can, of course, just hold it, wrap it around here and then start wrapping. You can totally do that too. Okay, so when you're wrapping, you want to make sure that you're wrapping right up underneath these little tabs, getting it right in here as close as you can so it fills all the way up on both sides. So see how I've got a gap there? I'm going to come back in and I'm going to fill all that up. And you just want to fill this level to a little over full. I always like to do it over full. Then I'm going to close it. You can snip the yarn first and close it. I just like, I like closing it first because that holds it securely closed and then snip off your yarn. Okay, I hope I counted. I am not so sure. I This may be an exact, because I kind of lost track. I wasn't sure the first time if I dropped 10 or 20 times. Anyways, we'll see. The idea that the reason I'm counting is so that both halves of the pom-pom are the same size. You can eyeball it and just wrap and wrap and wrap and then this side wrap and wrap and wrap, but then sometimes when you open it up, you got a little lopsided. So we'll see what this one looks like. So now again, I'm just gonna find that groove between the two tabs here and the scissors it just sits right in that groove and you start snipping. And you want really, really sharp scissors for this because you're going through all those strands of yarn, all those wraps of yarn. You want some really sharp scissors. So these are Fisker scissors that came from Michael's and they work really good. Other scissors like dollar store scissors, they don't work. I mean, if that's all you have, what you can do is you can go in and you can just pick up two or three strands and you can just kind of snip all of them but that'll make your 
some of your strands uneven because some may be a little, you may snip a little over here and a little over here. This way, if you follow the groove in this pom-pom maker, you're making sure you're snipping all of those strands evenly. So there again, when they open up, you don't have something that's a little longer or a little shorter. Who knew there was such a science to making pom-poms, right? Anyways, okay. So we'll see. I have a feeling that I maybe wrapped that first side more wraps than I did the second, just because I was trying to talk and wrap and count. And that doesn't always work so well, but that's okay. Because in the end, it is just pom-pom. And if it does doesn't get even wraps, you can trim it. But this one just felt a little thicker as I was as I was cutting it. And the difference on this one, this half here, that's where we slid the ends between the um, the pom pom makers. When you do that, you always get just an extra little bit here that you have to snip at the end. Just how they're folded in there, I don't know why it's a little different. This side where I just held it around, I just held it and started wrapping without sliding them between the, the actual two halves of the pom-pom maker. You don't get that extra little, oh, see, you can see, can you see that little white strand right there I missed? So I'll just snip it. But see how that is totally clean? This side here, this is where you can see those little pieces in the middle. That's where I slid the ends in to hold it. So then you just have to go in and you just actually have to make sure that you snip those pieces apart. So there again, it's like pick your fiddly, right? You either have to just hold it for a second or you slip it between the two pieces and then have to do that extra little snip with your scissors. And again, remember to cut your yarn to tie it. That would be, no, I don't want to do that. I was going to say that would be a good lesson and not what to do, but I really don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm sure you guys get the whole idea what a big mess that would be if you opened this up. Okay, so I just took my, I cut a strand of yarn and I wrapped it right in that groove and you pull it nice and tight, as tight as you can pull it. Because if it's not tight, tight enough, again, all those little, these little pieces of yarn that we've just cut are going to come apart. So then, and again, I pull it again and knot it. And now you find your little tabs and you pull them up, flip it over, find the tabs, left those open, find the little pieces on the sides and you pull them apart. Okay, so now this lime green one, that was supposed to be two and a half inches. This is what you get. Now you can give it a little fluff. Okay, it's not too bad. This side might have a little more on it. I'm just gonna trim some of this off. And when you're trimming them, I mean, you do whatever makes you happy. Get it as, you know, symmetrical as you like it to be. But don't go too crazy. Just uh, snip off anything. And this one needs more because I think I did miscount on my wraps. But, you know, you can spend, you got to be careful. You can, you can uh, kind of spend all day. You know, you'll look at it and you'll think, oh, this looks too long and you'll snip it. And then before you know it, you're just going, you're making it all shorter and shorter and shorter. So, you know, give it a once over and call it done. Look at that. Okay. So that looks like a good size pom-pom for a hat, doesn't it? I think so. If that was to go on, to go on the top of a hat. I think so. So, ta-da. <laughs> what do you think? So that was 60 wraps on each side. So the reason I like to triple the yarn, because that's 60 wraps 
with three strands of yarn. If you were doing that singly, that would be 60, 120, 180 times you'd have to wrap that for the same effect. So even if you wanted this to be all red, I would take your ball of red and wind off, you know, three, ball, three small balls and hold them together and wind. I wouldn't do it singly because you would be there all afternoon. But look at that. I think those turned out so great. And I am covered in little <laughs> pieces of like pop yarn confetti here. So that is that. So at, there's two more sizes bigger after that. Then we have this blue one, which is what, three and three eighths. And then the big guy who is supposed to be four and a half inches. This one here, I was only, I was just using two strands. I think I'm going to take that off. And I'll, I'll reuse this yarn because that's the thing about pom-pom yarn is that you can, you don't have to worry about um, having one continuous piece of yarn because you can wrap it around and use up little, little bits of yarn, wrap it a couple of times, get another strand, wrap it around because it's, it's all little ends anyways. And once you cut it, you just trim it off. It's not going to matter. So I'm going to make this one. Actually, you know what? Let's save this one for tomorrow because this video is like twice as long already that I was intending. But making pom poms is just, I don't know. I find it fun. I know there's a lot of other people out there who would disagree with me and that's fine. I will have, I will have fun for both of us. How's that? Back a while, a few weekends ago, I was out doing some shopping and I found some wreath farms. A little one. I don't know if this tells me how big it is. It says eight inches. And this is a 12 inch. So I'm going to make a couple of pom pom wreaths. And I'm not sure which size I will start with. Oh, yeah. Ooh, if I make big pom poms, it's not going to take long to fill it, is it? But I think I may have to play change up some of my colors. Hmm, I don't know. This, this could be fun. I may do some solid color pom-poms, some multicolored, some large and some small, and I think I'm just going to tie them on here and see what we come up with. And then uh, hang these up for Christmas. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I will be back tomorrow. For probably just a quick update and I'll, oh and I will show you about the knitting needles oh and you know what I have something else to tell oh my gosh so much for short videos <laughs> someday I think that they'll just be like a quick 10 minute quick update and this is like looking like we're already 40 minutes anyway I hope you've got your knitting for this one on the weekend I went to another outdoor crafters market um it was outdoor but then there were some vendors inside that were really you know spaced out and and the whole all the safety measures were observed there and there were some really interesting makers lots of jewelry food um soaps and creams and um drink there was coffee there was tea there was kombucha there was artwork there was pottery but my favorite booth of all was one selling pom-pom decorations. If you're in the Fiber Friends Facebook group, you'll see I posted a picture already of me standing in front of them. And they, the thing that was really exciting about their booth was their yarn, they said was made from recycled plastic bottles. And the yarn was soft. And so it was made into pom-poms and it had um, like wooden branches and some beads. It was, it was really nice. It was really nice. And as soon as I saw it, I thought, yes, somebody else loves pom-poms as much as I do. So all of their ornaments were all handmade. There was even a small Christmas tree. There were some garlands. And I'm like, I'm not totally crazy. I'm not the only one who does this. <laughs> Anyways, it was nice. So I will post, I will post, put some pictures at the end of this video of the market, which is like pretty much right now. So you'll see this outdoor market. It was almost it was like stepping into a hallmark christmas movie the the outdoor vendors and the lights and the christmas trees now it was during the day 
the Christmas lights were on, but obviously you didn't get the full effect as if it would be at nighttime. There was a canopy of lights. There was a huge Christmas tree. I forget how long they said 35 or 40 foot tall Christmas tree. Most definitely the biggest Christmas tree I'd ever seen decorated and well, had lights on it anyway. So I will put a couple pictures here at the end so you can see what it was. It was very, very festive. So thanks for watching everybody and I will see you tomorrow. Happy knitting. Mm -hmm.